Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Colleen Kelly. I'm the director of programs at the Saratoga Senior Center. Uh, the Senior Center has been a part of the community for over 65 years. Our mission has been to help seniors achieve and maintain independence and socialization as we age and to have fun also, you know, meet new people, uh, life changes. So we have a couple different parts at the Senior Center. I'm involved in programs. I do classes. We do art. We have uh, dinners, music all the time with Jeff. <laughs> um, so uh, we do a lot with socialization, peer groups, um, and then we have senior support services, which Lawrence was very involved in, and that's we have advocacy, referrals, we give seniors rides, uh, we deliver um, bags of food to over 100 shut-in seniors every week from the Capital Region Food Bank, and then within our support services, we have a senior life transition program, which works with seniors who are um, critically ill and to help them with, with their life transition. So we have a lot of fun things, new and exciting things coming up. Uh, we are moving to a new building on the property of the uh, Saratoga YMCA on West Avenue, and we hope to expand. We expect to expand. We hope to have a lot more seniors. We have double the space. Right now we have about 140 people a day come through the center to use the facility. So we think that's going to grow. So please join us at some time. It's 50 and up, so I think a lot of us are eligible. So come on down. <laughs> Thank you. So Lawrence is going to tell his story, and Jeff is going to perform a song for him. Welcome, everyone. Um, I'm Lawrence. Some of you know me. Some of you don't. For the next 10 minutes, I would like for all of you to pretend that you're 65 and above. I, I do much better with that crowd. Um, Jokester. Nervous. <laughs> um, Margaret French was my um, story coach. And I wrote this great piece that I thought was great. It was from academia, and it connected all the dots. And it was perfect. And Margaret said, Throw that away, we're storytelling. <laughs> she said, you're going to be talking to an intelligent audience. That's you guys. They want to make inferences. You tell a story, they make inferences. So I'll tell a story. Um, I grew up between uh, here in Saratoga and Brooklyn. Uh, after school, I left, and I, or after school here, I left and went to college. After college, I came back for a short time and then ran to the city where I could be myself. Um, I met my partner, and we moved to Miami, where it's always sunny. Um, unfortunately, after 10 years, it wasn't always sunny. I got a phone call at work, and he was in the hospital um, because of a bad egg sandwich. It wasn't really a bad egg sandwich. It was AIDS. And the virus killed him three months later and then became my new life partner. Um, I became a Charles Bukowski character and uh, a little self-destructive. I was very lonely. I worked just enough to get to the next drink and uh, a lot of that, um, but was able to hold my life together. I came back to Saratoga uh, to seek shelter and then did that for another 10 years. And one day I got up and my mother had always you know, made us uh, be selfless and put others before ourselves. And I said, you know, I should give back to this community that's helped. Um, give me shelter. And um, I tried to find volunteer work everywhere, and I couldn't. I was at a dinner party, and a good friend said, why don't you take over for me doing the reminiscing group at the senior center? Reminiscing, that's storytelling. <laughs> so I did, and it was incredible. Um, I was able to relate to them. I knew their stories. They might have taken place in a different time, but I knew all of those stories. I knew all of these people. The stories don't change, just the time does. They just wanted to be heard. They didn't want to be forgotten. They didn't want to be alone. They just wanted to tell their story. Uh, Lois Celeste, who's the director of the Senior Center, said, you have some connection, crazy connection, with these seniors. Come and work for me. And I said, no. I have a job. 
I have a job. So she convinced me to work at the desk, where I met more seniors who told me more stories. And I listened. And Lois came to me, and she said, come and work for me. Come and work for me. No, I said, I have a job. Eventually, I, I wore down, and I worked for Lois for 25 hours a week. But that wasn't enough. That wasn't enough for Lois. That wasn't enough for me. <laughs> I started doing it 40 hours a week, and then secretly 60 hours a week. <laughs> I got as much out of it as it got out of me. I didn't know anything that I was meant to do. Lois threw me down into um, something called volunteer coordination and senior support services. I had no, no uh, experience in either of them. But when you're thrown into the middle of the ocean, you need a lifesaver. I started doing what I've always done, and I started networking. I know everybody. Um, soccer moms became my drivers and started bringing senior women to their dentist appointments and even their haircuts. Um, I know in my heart of hearts that in order to have a healthy community, every part of the community has to be healthy. And we all have to work together to get to that. Some people don't agree with me, but uh, every part of the community is integral to that community. It's, it's an ecosystem. Um, I reached out to the other nonprofits when I didn't know what to do. Um, in a collaboration that we did with the Elks, we learned about the fact that we could use the food pantry with our nonprofit uh, ticket number. I forget what it's called, 501C3, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> So we started using the food pantry in Albany, and now, uh, as Colleen said, we deliver over 100 uh, bags of produce and food to seniors a week. We also in-house do another 100, and during the pandemic, we were doing 250. Um, that came from our collaboration with the Elks. The Giving Circle collaborated with me to do leaf cleanups and yard cleanups. Uh, in the spring, they got to be so adept at this, they would actually plant flowers for the seniors who would call me and say, I gave them apple cider and donuts. <laughs> um, the high schoolers are incredible once you get them and you talk to them on their level. They, they only text, you know. Um, they did computer assistance. They went out and uh, took out air conditioners, put in air conditioners, did yard work, whatever you, I needed from the high schoolers they would do. Um, the Navy, if you ever have to set up an event and you want efficiency, call the Navy. <laughs> Pitney Meadows, I was told, why are you getting involved with Pitney Meadows when they first opened? I said, the seniors want a garden. Um, we had a little plot out of my own pocket. I paid for seeds and things, and no one understood why I was doing it. Pitney Meadows now supplies us with food every summer or every growing season, let's put it that way, whatever that may be with global warming, uh, with fresh produce for the seniors. Also, through connections there, um, we've made other connections that support uh, another big program we have, the... Um, I'm going to forget the name. Can somebody help me with this? Phil DeSorbo? Senior Life Transitions, Senior Life Transitions <laughs> Program. That's how nervous I am. So um, a big sponsor of that. Uh, the Salvation Army, I would give them, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say their name, but a big sponsor gives us pallets of granola bars. There's only so much fiber seniors can have. It's <laughs> <laughs> <I, laughs> <I'm> doing great. <laughs> I gave 10 cases to the Salvation Army. <laughs> Why? That's not part of the Senior Center mission. You know, I have a good friend, Owen Look. Owen Look, when the pandemic came, the Salvation Army called us and said, Lawrence, I have toilet paper and sanitizers for all of your seniors. Um, Franklin Community Center, the list goes on and on. For uh, the United Way, I called them and I got them to help me get on their volunteer portal and get Christmas gifts for uh, seniors who had nothing. And we brought that list up very big. And then the United Way did something special. They met with us and they started paying for the gas in our vans. Um, 
Skidmore, I, I can't even say enough. That all of you should praise Skidmore for all the help that they're doing in the community. When I was a little kid, they were called Skidiots, and we, <laughs> <laughs> we were called townies, and now I have to tell you, Skidmore holds this nonprofit community together with all of the work that they do. God bless them. Anyway, what I'm saying is we need the collaboration between these, even if you don't believe that these things have anything in common. Gateway, you know, guess what? My people go to Gateway at some point. Uh, I visited them there. Shelters of Saratoga, your people come and spend the days with us sometimes when they have nowhere else to go. Um, we all have to work together to make this a healthy community. Um, I have so much more. I'm just. Uh, Collaborations with just good people. I called the DPW. I got a phone call from a woman in Greenfield. It's a big snowstorm. She couldn't get her husband to uh, dialysis. I called DPW in Greenfield. They went out, they plowed her out, and then took her husband to dialysis. Um, during the pandemic, 1,500 seniors got my phone because I had to work from home for a month. <laughs> Um, I can tell you that part about being lonely and feeling broken, and I'm never lonely. <laughs> <clears throat> One night at 4 a.m., I got a phone call, and a senior said to me, Lawrence, and I said, Mary. <laughs> she said, I think they turned my power off. I said, Mary, did you pay the bill? Yes, Lawrence, I pay my bills. Why do you think they turned the power off? It's dark. <laughs> Mary, it's 4 a.m. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> During that same snowstorm that we helped with dialysis, we were waist deep. Lois Celeste, I say waist deep, Lois Celeste was under snow. <laughs> <laughs> the phone rang and I answered it, Linda. And she said, Lawrence, you've got to help me. I said, what's wrong, Linda? She said, I'm homebound, the snow. I said, I know, we're up to our waist in it now. I said, what's the problem, Linda? I know you have food. The Office for the Aging has given you 14 meals. You have two weeks worth of food. Are you out of medicine? Linda said, no, I'm just stuck at home. I said, Linda, I think it's good that you stay home. I've got a light bulb out. And Lawrence, how does one make it through the day without a bagel? I brought Linda a bagel and changed her light bulb. I miss it terribly. It filled a big hole in my life. But that's not the end of my story. Or there's another story. And I'll finish on that note and then give you to Jeff Brisbane, who's going to make me cry again. <laughs> Phil DeSorbo was in the audience. Phil DeSorbo um, was integral in helping establish hospice here in Saratoga. I don't know if you know who he is, but he deserves a big hand. Um, <laughs> this is the last story I'm telling. Phil came um, home from Africa, and he handed me a starfish and said, this is for you. And I said, well, thank you. Where do you find a starfish in Africa? Um, I said, what is this for? He said, it's your story. And I said, my story? And then Phil proceeded to tell me the story, which I'm going to end on and tell you. The tale of the starfish. It all started when a young girl was walking along a beach and thousands of starfish had washed up during a terrible storm. When she came to each starfish, she would pick it up and throw it back into the ocean. People watched her with amusement. She had been doing this for some time. When a man approached her and said, little girl, why are you doing this? Look at this beach. You can't save all of these starfish. You can't begin to make a difference. The girl seemed crushed, deflated. But after a few minutes, she bent down, picked up another starfish, and hurled it as fast as she could into the sea. She looked at the man and replied, well, I made a difference for that one.
The old man looked at the girl inquisitively and thought about what she had done and said. Inspired, he joined the little girl in throwing the starfish back into the ocean. And before long, all the others on the beach joined and the starfish were saved. Beautiful. So I listened to what Lawrence said, and uh, this is called Every Word. I remember when I got here, remember my first day. Didn't know what to do, expect or say. Then I saw their faces, how I could help them smile. I'd cover all the bases and go the extra mile. I see a bit of them in me, it's like looking in a mirror. Some new ways I was lost and found. Made my purpose clearer I got so much more Than I could ever give My heart is so full Loving this life I live The stories they tell me Just want to be heard So I listen I listen I listen To every word Mm -hmm. I look in their eyes And I can feel their hearts We're all part of each other Sharing different parts Wanting to give back To those who really need it Learning every day Giving my time would feed it the Stories they tell me just want to be heard so I listen, I listen, I listen to every word. I listen, I listen to every word. Mm, I remember when I got here. Remember my first day Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much It's a great man right here Very good, Very good. Uh, Thank you